Thank you for the introduction, Jeff. I'll get straight into this. Today I'm going to talk about the PFR motto, Better Cultivars Faster. And I'm going to talk about how we've achieved this through the advancement of basic genomics science. So this is a talk about advancement of science. I'm going to talk about what the impact of this advancement is to the breeders and to the industry. Now, first of all, I'd like to look at a traditional breeding program. Rolly might appreciate this. Uh, I'm going to use apple as the example because that's what I started with. The industry and the breeders work together to choose the breeding goals. And the breeders work on the germplasm, which are the plants growing in the research orchards to create new varieties. Now in traditional breeding, the breeders use information derived from physical observations only, and there's no use made of DNA-based information. Very nice cultivars are produced, but relatively inefficiently in terms of time and resources. This is just to emphasise uh, the fact that no, this is, represents genomics, the science of the sequence of the DNA, and that is not used in traditional breeding. But we'll we move on to now at PFR, and uh, we now use DNA information in the breeding programs, and this has been uh, the case for over 14 years at this stage. Genomics, as I said, is the science of DNA sequence. And this tells us that in the apple genome, there are over 50,000 genes. And some of these are candidate genes for the characters that the breeders are targeting in their program. Now, the job of genetic mappers, and some of them are sitting here in the audience, from my team, my previous team, is to develop genetic markers for the characters that the breeders and the industry are targeting. And these genetic markers, which are short sequences of DNA, are used to select seedlings which carry a desirable, desired combination of characters. So these are elites and there's a small number of these in each breeding population. How does marker assisted selection work? Well the marker is located either on the gene of interest or very close to it. <coughs> the seedlings need not express the character before selection and here we have Vincent Buss surveying his seedlings <coughs> prior to harvest for marker assisted selection. Now the amount of leaf needed is just a small amount, about the size of one of my fingernails. Not very much. And the DNA is extracted from these and screened. And the seedlings that do not carry the marker for the trait are then culled, binned which means the population has been cut in half so that each time there is a selection, the population is half. So we've very rapidly reduced the number of seedlings that the breeders actually have to look at physically. Now marker assisted selection has been used for over 14 years at PFR. We are breeding better cultivars faster. The breeders are screening for seedlings which are resistant to all these nasties depicted here, a range of pests and diseases. And they're selecting four desirable fruit characters, including red colour, skin, crispness. Now the impact on apple breeders 
is the minimization of orchard evaluation costs. As I said, every time you do a screen, you have the amount of seedlings <coughs> left for the breeders to look at. And the breeders can react in two ways. They, they can either look at their fewer seedlings or start, uh, start with many, many more seedlings and then look at the same number of elites in the end. The number of breeding cycles can be reduced in the identification of plants with pyramided genes. It's highly desirable to develop cultivars which have two or more different resistances to the same pests or to disease. And this means that the, the resistance is much more durable and long lasting. There's a constant warfare between plants and pests. And the time from seed to advance selection through a number of crosses is reduced by 30%. That's uh, a trial that was done in the rootstock breeding <coughs> program. So this is real data. Now you want to take a good look, a little look at kiwi fruit. We have at PFR markers for the sex of the seedlings. This means the non-fruiting male seedlings can be identified and the breeders can then focus on the productive fruiting females. Uh, in this program there's over ten, there are many tens of thousands of seedlings screened annually. And that's a real plus for kiwi fruit breeders. Uh, in the pipeline we've got markers for red flesh and for resistance PSA. So as with apple, for kiwi fruit, marker assisted selection accelerates the delivery of new cultivars to global markets. And another plus is the creation of a spin-out company, Slipstream Automation, which has been set up uh, by former PFR staff to extract DNA using a high degree of automation and to screen the markers, also using automation. So to wrap this up, uh, yes, I think I've demonstrated that we can uh, produce better cultivars faster through an advancement of basic genomic science in this case. New Zealand is now an international leader in the development of molecular techni technologies uh, for fruit breeders to develop new varieties. Marker assisted selection helps breeders select genetically elite seedlings carrying must have characters from populations of thousands of seedlings. Current PFR crops have moved on from the initial apple and then kiwi fruit through <coughs> pears, hops, raspberry, blueberry, summer fruit and most recently manuka. My colleague Professor Jim McPherson from uh, Washington State University wrote this technological platform from DNA extraction to market development and validation to routine screening is now incorporated into day-to-day -day activities of fruit breeding programs worldwide. Thanks, Jim. I think that sort of wraps it up. And finally, I'd like to thank my many team, meet, uh, <coughs> team members and collaborators nationally and internationally over the last 40 years of my career. Uh, thanks everybody. I won't name you individually because that's invidious. Uh, but yeah, thanks and it's been a fun ride.